I'm doing, uh, I make videos, I teach, I teach math. So this is, this is just doing mathematics. I'm, how to do unit conversions. Like have you guys, did you guys do math? Are you taking math? Yes. Have you guys done any converting units? Like do you, do, you, do you guys do stuff like going to the store, pay a dollar, buy two candy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's unit conversion because you're giving, you're giving somebody a dollar and they're giving you two pieces of candy, right? So that's, that's all I'm doing. I'm sort of going to teach, teach, teaching how you do it generically, like for color squares and triangles, and then you can apply that wherever you go. Like for example, if you go to a store, if you have... If you have two dollars, right, you could buy seven orange boxes, right? So if you have two green boxes, it could be your two dollars, you buy seven something. something, chocolate bars if you want. So are you going to put it on YouTube? Yeah, I put it on YouTube. Hi, this is Chicho again. And uh, if you've been following the language of mathematics, uh, you would have recognized this wall. Someone's already been here for a happy face on there. Uh, we've used this wall a few times over the last few years uh, in the previous four series that we've done. And uh, it served us pretty well, and we're here to uh, you know, use it again. And what we're going to do is sort of lay out the work. Uh, this is a concept, what we're about to do uh, for the first few videos in the units and ratios section, which is basically to learn how to do unit conversions, how to move from one system to another. So the way you should think about a system is basically us human beings grouping things together, things that have similar behaviors, things that have similar properties, right? Or things that have similar ideas, similar thought patterns. You know, if you're preparing food, we ended up calling that cooking, right? If you're making pastries, we ended up calling that baking, right? If you're studying the motion of objects, we've ended up calling that kinematics, which is a branch of physics. What we're going to do is take a look at some of these systems, just list some of these systems, and take a look at some of the units that exist within the systems, okay? You know, science, engineering, technology, medicine, food, fitness, art, fashion, music, gambling, economics, or politics. And some of these, some of these systems, some of these disciplines overlap with each other. A lot of these things overlap with each other. Some of them have units that only exist within themselves. A lot of them have units that exist beyond themselves, right? They cross over between all the different, uh, di uh, different disciplines that exist here. Sciences, again, it's a large umbrella. It has multiple branches going, going off, multiple systems, multiple disciplines going off. There's, in sciences, there's, there's uh, physics, there's chemistry, there's biology, there's earth sciences, there's meteorology, astronomy, whatever you want, right? And each one of those has its own discipline within itself. Physics has kinematics. Physics has uh, uh, electromagnetics. Right? You can just steady, just continue to branch things off and go deeper and deeper into a system. And as soon as you group things together, as soon as you branch off and find, it, find a whole bunch of other things that interact in a similar way, then you might create specific units that exist within that system only. So let's list some of these units that we may encounter and uh, just, just uh, you know, so, so that we're familiar with them, okay? Now there are seven base units that cross over a lot of these different disciplines, these, these different systems. And for those, we've come up with the international system of units, which is recognized almost everywhere except three countries, which is the United States, uh, Liberia, and Burma. And those are the seven base units that I've written down here, which is um, meters, kilograms, seconds, amperes, uh, Kelvin, moles, and uh, caldera. I've never, I've never used it myself. It's, and, and they represent each one. Meters is, you know, length. We need to find out how, how long things are, right? How, you know, what, what their dimensions are, right? And that's, internationally, we use meters. There's also the imperial system, which uses feet and inches and, and, um, and, and miles, right? There's kilograms for weight. Um, the other system is, um, uh, is pounds, which is used beyond, uh, you know, outside of uh, the United States, uh, Liberia, and Burma. In Canada, 
when you start talking with people, very few people give you, you know, if you ask them how, how much they weigh, very few people will tell you how much they weigh in kilograms. They use pounds, right? So these international systems that have been developed, they're not necessarily used in everyday talk and they're not necessarily used in every calculation. There's uh, seconds. Seconds time is pretty international. Uh, seconds, in, you know, I don't know any, any country in the world that doesn't use seconds, right? There's amperes which are electric current. And uh, current, again, as far as I know, amperes is used internationally. This Kelvin, which is uh, a unit that we use for temperature in the sciences, in calculations, because it's convenient to use Kelvin. It, it works with a lot of different formulas and a lot of different properties of different materials. But in everyday speak, I'm, I don't know any place in the world if you went up to someone and said, hey, what's the temperature outside? They would give you the temperature in Kelvin. You're either talking about degrees or uh, degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. And then there's um, a moles, which is the amount of a substance, and that again is never used in everyday life because moles is a huge number, which is used in chemistry for uh, finding out, uh, talking about molecules, right? And uh, you know, if you had a mole of people, that would be probably take over the world or something like this, right? So moles is very specific to certain disciplines here, certain um, certain systems that exist. And the other one, CD as Caldera, it's it's luminosity. I don't, I've never used it myself. I might have used it when I did my studies in sciences, but I never used it myself in everyday life. Now, in these SI units, the first three, those basically encompass every system that we're talking about right if you're if you're running you talk about how far you've ran if you're if you're make you know doing reps you're talking about how much weight you're lifting right if you're cooking something you're looking at your clock and you're figuring out how long you've had your pastry and your pastry in the oven or or whatever you have on the stove right if you're talking about economics there's time involved in economics there's distance involved in economics there's weight involved in economics right if you're going to be selling something taking something from one location transporting to the other you need to take into consideration distance right you need to take into consideration the weight of the the things that you're transporting from one place to another. You need to figure out how long it's going to take you to take something from one place to another, right? You also need to, you know, if it has to be refrigerated, you have to figure out how to refrigerate it. Now, when you're doing that, you're not going to start using Kelvin. You're going to start using degrees or Fahrenheit. You're going to start using Celsius or Fahrenheit, right? You're going to have to figure out how much quantity of a material you have but you're not going to measure them in moles you're going to measure them in whatever system that you're using to do your business right to to conduct your politics you know may it be dozens may it be crates okay so these seven SI units they're used internationally for calculations in the sciences specifically Now from these SI based units, you can drive a whole bunch of other uh, units which are basically called SI drive units, right? And that's unlimited and they come into a lot of different disciplines. May it be, may it be music, may it be medicine, may it be economic, fitness, may it be in, in cooking, in baking, whatever it is that you're studying, there's going to be some form of units that you're going to be using which are SI units or derived from the SI units, okay? So some of the derived base units here is, you know, there's a whole list of them. It could be uh, Hertz, which is one over seconds. You could have radians, you could have uh, Newtons, Pascals, Joules, Watts, uh, Coulombs. If you're talking about volume of something, you talk about liters. If, you want, if you're getting into uh, electricity, you're going to talk about volts. If you're getting into magnetic flux, the, if you're studying magnetism, you're going to get into Tesla, okay? You're going to encounter Tesla, which is the magnetic flux of something. And if I can recommend something to you, if, you're gonna, if you want to read about uh, you know, some of the accomplishments of some, one of the greatest scientists that our species has produced, uh, look into Nikola Tesla because what 
what he was able to do is the the, the foundation of our society, which is you know bringing elect you know introducing a system where we're able to use electricity the way we are able to use it right now. Some of the ideas that he came up with, and um, again, if if you want to study someone's uh, someone's work, life work, and how that has influenced our society, definitely look into Tesla and some of the stuff that he created and some of the ideas that he had. Uh, uh, you won't be disappointed, okay? Now for us to be able to figure out how to do unit conversion, we're not going to study a specific system because as I mentioned before, mathematics is just a language and how you use a language is very personal. Right? So if we start delving into a certain discipline to learn how to do, do unit conversions, we're going to alienate somebody right? because I may like something that you may not like. So what we're going to do, we're going to learn how to use unit conversion on a generic system. We're going to come up with our own little scale system and we're going to figure out how to just apply mathematics to switch from one system to another and the way we learn how to do this is going to work with whatever system that we're going to study because we're not really concerned about right now delving into a system and learning how the system works. That's going to come into uh, play when we start doing math in real life, when we start applying some of the mathematics, some of the tools that we have in real life, maybe for gaming and gambling, uh, economics, politics, whatever it is, food and fitness, maybe in sciences, right? So what we're going to do right now is set up a sort of our own scale system and we're going to use this for a few videos just to learn how to do conversions from one unit to another and that's where ratios is going to kick in. So I'm just going to go here, lay down the system and we'll take a look at it and discuss it very briefly but keep this in mind what we're about to do and definitely keep this in mind because this is what units are. Units are sort of a convention that we've come up with to explain certain properties of things in certain disciplines, right? In certain systems that we're either functioning in or studying. So this is the scale system that we're going to use to learn how to do unit conversions from one system to another, from one unit scale to another, okay? And it's, it's basically, you know, a generic system that we've come up with. The, if, you, if you want, call it the, the, the realm of colored squares and triangles, right? All it means is, over here, if you have two boxes, two green boxes equals seven orange boxes. So if you had two green boxes, the boxes would be your units, and the green boxes would be your units over here, and the orange boxes would be your units over there, right? So, so if you have four green boxes, then you should get back 14 orange boxes, right? And that's all it is, and it's a relationship between colored boxes to each other, and colored boxes to colored triangles, and colored triangles to colored triangles, right? So it's basically a pointing device telling you what is equivalent to what, okay? And that's all we're doing, right? We're, we're, con we're using ratios and what we've learned about the equal sign to be able to convert from one unit to another. That's it for now. Uh, this is going to be what the units and ratio section is, is going to be about. And, uh, you know, we're going to build on this and grow it to a level, to a place where we can actually go into certain disciplines, go into certain realms and start working with them and understanding them based on the units that we're being presented. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.